Hi, this is Karen Smith. Welcome to our lecture on real numbers and their subsets. Let's get started. Hopefully you have a notebook and a pencil ready to go. And let's begin. In the system of real numbers, or the real number system, it's important to realize that all real numbers can either be rational numbers or irrational numbers. But I'll come back to what makes them rational or irrational in a sec. Let's zoom in on just the rational numbers for now and look at what is inside of them. So inside of rational numbers, you'll find fractions that are non-integers and integers. So for fractions, you'll see numbers like 12 thirteenths, you may even see three-fourths. You could see it in decimal form as 0 0.52. Uh, the point is they're not the integer version of frac uh, not the integer version of fractions. So we'll talk more about that as well in a minute. For integers, we're talking about numbers that can be negative, like negative three, negative two, negative one. 0, 1, to the whole steps, if you will, and on and on. And then also coming up from the negative infinity, the whole step. So negative 10 would be included in this group, the integers. Um, positive 23 would be one of these. 429, um, if you want to tack on negative 320, that's also an integer. So the next zoom in we'll want to look at would be what's inside the integers. So let's go there next. Inside the integers, you'll see that we have these negative integers plus whole numbers. Now, whole numbers, I can remember them by the fact that there is an O in the word whole. So that kind of gives me a little memory device to remember that the whole numbers include zero and the positive integers. So here we go, dot, 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 on, and on and on, and so on, right? So zero, one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. So positive 20 is in the whole numbers. Negative two is not a whole number. It's only zero and the positive integers. Zooming in further, Inside of the whole numbers, we find zero, put it as its own group. So let's do that. We can have zero, and I'll just write this one out like this. So we'll put zero in one box, and then we'll put in our other box what we call the natural numbers. Notice that the natural numbers do not have a zero in this set. They actually just contain the numbers that we use to count. So we actually would call natural numbers counting numbers. For example, if you count the fingers on your hand, you start with the number one, one, two, three, four, etc. So there you go. Counting numbers is a, another name for the natural numbers. So that's pretty much the system of real numbers. All right, I said I'd come back to what makes number rational or irrational. So let's hit on that for a sec and then we'll be done with this video. So here is the difference between rational numbers and irrational numbers, the two main subsets that we mentioned of the real numbers. So rational numbers can be put into the form integer over integer. Okay, also we wanna make sure that the denominator never equals zero. Of course, because we don't want it to be an undefined integer. So if we can do this, let's see some examples. For example, the number three we can write the number three as three over one. So it's rational. If you can put it into a fraction 
form of an integer over an integer, then it's rational. Let's check this one out. Another example would be, let's say 12 over six, which actually would be two. We could say that's two or two over one, right? Another would be four and one seventh, the mixed number. You might think, what do I do with this? Well, we can put these into an improper fraction form, right? Seven times four is 28. 28 plus one is 29. And we put it over the seven, voila, integer divided by integer. One final example would be if we take 0 0.75. We could say that this is what, 75 over 100. Right there, you can already see that it is an integer over an integer. But if you want to go for it and reduce this fraction, it actually becomes 3 fourths. So again, rational numbers. Okay, so now let's take a look at what makes numbers irrational. So for irrational numbers, we want to find numbers that are non-repeating or non-terminal decimals. And this takes very little investigation with, say, a calculator or even long division. Let's take, for example, uh, the square root of 2. If you plug this into the calculator, you would get 1.414213. One, three, five, six, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. What you see here is a non-repeating decimal. In other words, it goes on and on, and it doesn't have a discernible pattern. No discernible pattern. Also, it has no repeating, uh, it doesn't stop, so it continues. It doesn't terminate. It definitely fits both um, conditions for an irrational number. How about the number pi? If you put pi into your calculator, click equals, what comes up? You would get three point, a lot of times you see people just stopping here and, and abbreviating 3.14, but it's really 3.14159265358979, and it actually goes on and on and on and on. Again, there's no discernible pattern. So this one, again, it also does not terminate. So this one is also in the batch of irrational numbers. And there are many similar numbers that, to these in the irrationals. So here you have it. Now, just a little bit of an example, if I could ask you to categorize these examples, are they gonna be irrational or rational? Let's say, what about A? Let's do the square root of four. Okay, we know that that is going to be two. You could say plus or minus two. We're just gonna use the principal square root two. So that's definitely rational. So let's take, um, for example, five divided by six, or five sixes. So we put this into the calculator. All right away, you can see that it's an integer over an integer. That's cool. But say you forget that, you put it in the calculator. So you can tell by integer over integer, but also once you put it in, and you get the answer in the calculator, five divided by six, you're gonna see that it's 0 0.8, three, 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 and three goes on forever. We can also write this as 0 0.83, and then put a line over the three, because that is the part that repeats. So we do have a repeating decimal pattern. Okay, so there's that. So this one is also rational. Okay. And now one more example, let's do C. So it's about the square root of 13. Put this in your calculator, plug in the square root 13 equals, and you should get 3.60555. Don't get too excited, because then it's one, two, seven, five, four, et cetera, et cetera. It may have this wonderful five, 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 but it does not have a pattern that we can make out. So bummer. No pattern, okay? 
So again, this one, C, is irrational. Okay, so if you have any questions about this, let me know. Or you can email your instructor through our course, through email, or other contact information that you've been given. All right, talk to you all soon. Bye.